Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series talking about something that's going to be very important moving forward in 1.7 and that is understanding the abdication mechanics and how you can abuse them to both reduce radicalism and to force through laws that you want to pass. Um, this is going to, for this we are going to first explain it and then we are going to give a couple examples. The tutorial will probably not be that long so we're probably not going to have a summary at the end. First of all, the abdication from the throne uh, mechanic, there are several things that allow you to abdicate, including your IGs not liking you, but the most critical one is you need to have a revolution opposing you, or this is the best way to abuse it, so we're just only going to focus on this. Um, there is another mechanic for resignation of office that functions exactly the same, but it shares a different cooldown, and this is if you are on some sort of republic, you do this. Now, the intention behind the game is that if you abdicate to uh, a movement, it kind of enforces whatever the movement w wants uh, and gives you uh, a sharp decrease in loyalists. And this is a sort of fair exchange. Um, and so, like, if we do this with William of Hanover here, um, backing down to this passing presidential republic, uh, we will see this second option is the one we want to focus on, uh, where we will cancel the enactment of presidential republics. So we're effectively giving into the revolution, and in return, we will get a sharp decrease in loyalists. Also notice here, there will also get uh, re re people removed from the government and get the Bloodless Revolution modifier, which gives 90, minus 90% 90 interest group political strength. And so we see here, we can do a couple of things. is We can force whatever the Rev was uh, going for, we can get loyalists, and we can affect clout. And these are the fundamental things. And so normally what this is doing is it's punishing you for trying to pass something that you are interested in passing, which of course we don't want to do. Of course, this will be nice getting a sharp decrease in radicals or increase in loyalists, uh, but other than that, we're not very happy that we couldn't pass a law that we wanted to pass. The way that you abuse this is you create revolutions for stuff you want to pass. So let's say here, as USA, we want to pass universal suffrage. We invited Giuseppe Manzini so that he would agitate it for it. So this is now allowing us to target a particular law because he's agitating for this. So if this becomes revolutionary and we abdicate it for this, it will enact universal suffrage, but it'll also enact um, whatever associated governance principle is with the revolution. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the revolution. Uh, but here we want to make one of these guys very pissed. Sometimes you can make maybe something like the Intelligentsia very pissed. They might like universal suffrage, but they might just join a preserve movement if the way that you're making them ups is upset is what we're going to be doing, which we're going to be trying to pass colonial exploitation, which will really piss off the yeoman farmers. Uh, after we do this, they should become very insurrectionary as the radicalism gets high. Um, we can do various things to increase their radicalism. Generally, this is not necessary because you will be accumulating radicals over time and you don't want to just increase it arbitrarily, but for the purposes of this video, we can talk about some of the things you can do in case you find yourself not having enough radicalism to provoke a rev. You can slot people in and out of government. You can hire and fire generals. These are kind of the two best. Every time we do this, we're going to generate a bunch of radicals. Um, it's kind of a strange spot to be in, but this is what we're going to do uh, several times to make these guys more and more mad until their radicalism rises high enough that they will start having a rev. Okay, so we have ourselves our rev basically as soon as we hit stop recording. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here. And now we can use the resign from office mechanic. Once this is only 14 years, unlike monarchies, uh, abdication uh, cooldown, which is uh, 30 years. These are separate cooldowns. So you can abdicate to a monarchy, make yourself a presidential republic, and then resign from office. So you can get two fairly early. If you start on monarchy, you can get two of these events. But we're going to do this. We're going to get hands thrown up. And now since we're abdicating or resigning to this revolution for universal suffrage when we choose the second option not only uh, will we enable universal suffrage we will also uh, or sorry not only will we get the extra loyalists we will enable universal suffrage rather than just avoiding passing a particular law which is what we had in the second effect and so we will be able to go on to universal suffrage effectively for free. Now, another important thing to emphasize is you can use this to manipulate clout as well, in particular for the purposes of demarginalizing the trade unionists. I don't think this is going to work. I don't think this is going to be quite enough to demarginalize them. But remember that the event, what it would do is it would give everyone in government minus 90% clout. Often this can be enough to force the trade unions on up. So what we're going to do is we're going to slot everyone in government. When the yeoman farmers become revolutionary, they will dip out of government and they will be the only 
only ones out of government. We will get ourselves this revolution that we just abdicated to before. But now the conditions are a little different. We just have the yeoman farmers around. So let's say we wanted the yeoman farmers to have a ton of clout. We would play like this now that all these guys are in government, including the southern planters and armed forces who were tied up with the yeoman farmers. We will just abdicate to this revolution to dear Giuseppe. And we will say, hey, you know what? We've had enough. Old Hickory, we're out. Uh, and we will get this event. But now we get this 90, minus 90% clout on all these interest groups that are in government so if we take a look and watch the clout 8.3 percent here we will do the second one we will get universal suffrage and if we let the clout adjust the yeoman farmers are now yoked up and the trade unionists more than doubled in their clout they weren't particularly close they were 1.1 before and so it's not enough to demarginalize them immediately uh, but this is a way that if you're kind of on the cusp you can force the trade unions to become demarginalized especially after you've already researched uh, the technologies that make it easier uh, which are egalitarianism and labor movement once you get the two of these, if you use like a full abdication like this, often you can force them out uh, from being marginalized. So for our final example, we're going to look at creating the USSR. Now recall what I said, when you abdicate in this way, it will enforce the governance principle of the interest group that is the strongest in the opposition, it will enforce their government principle on the government in addition to passing whatever it is that they wanted to pass. What we have done here as Russia is we've gotten a very early socialism tech because we wanted to form the USSR rather quickly, which allows us to roll communists. We've then recruited a ton of generals looking for a particular situation, which is that we want a communist general who is popular and he is in fact our most popular popular general. When you exile your interest group leader and you have a generals and admirals, whoever's the most popular will take control of the party. So here we have a, a land reformer uh, in our intelligentsia. We're going to reform the government. We're going to slot them out. We're going to exile this guy. Now keep in mind, we have a ton of ra radicalism here per the 1.7 patch. And so we would also like to get rid of some of this. So we're not gonna try and accrue radicalism. So we're gonna exile this guy. He becomes an agitator. Lo and behold, he's replaced by this communist. We're gonna slot this communist into a government, although it's not going to matter too, too much. Uh, whether he's in government or not. Actually, we won't slot him into government because that'll generate slightly more radicals. And we uh, have this massive restore censorship movement. You know who hates restoring censorship? The intelligentsia. As soon as we start supporting this movement, we are going to have a preserve, um, whatever it is, guaranteed libs that is going to be critical. Uh, a storm approaches, damn right it does. Um, that is going to be critical from the intelligentsia, whom's leader actually doesn't support normal intelligentsia stuff, they have a communist, right, who is going to support council republic. So when we abdicate to him, we will enforce our government principle that the strongest IG in the revolution supports. In this case, the only IG is the intelligentsia, but they'd also be the strongest because they have 42% clout because we recruited a bunch of generals, so they'd have a bunch of clout so that this rev for restore censorship would never pop, which is why we have a ton of intelligentsia generals um, in this round. We kind of threaded the needle in this one. But now what we will do is we will just abdicate to it. We will go resign from office, hands thrown up, and we see for this one, we do have to give them what they want in the guaranteed liberties. Uh, and we should have, you know, we should have slotted these people in the government that we didn't like too much. So we should have made sure we got the conservative party in and this sort of thing. Okay, we're re-showing it just a little bit more precisely where we just have the intelligentsia around out of government uh, because this will give us the most clout to the trade unions, which we want to have coming up uh, for past future laws and so we're going to resign from office here we're going to get hands thrown up we will select the thing and we will see now it is minus 90 on a whole lot more people we will click it in uh, and in doing this we will almost certainly demarginalize the trade unionists uh, after the game calculates they're up to seven percent clout the intelligentsia has a whopping 61 percent this is going to be a little bit better for us we will of course cancel the censorship pass because we didn't even want to pass that anyways and these guys are radicalized but they have a whole lot less clout so that's going to be fine with us. Um, and so this is how you do it. Um, it will do several things. Again, it will affect the clout. Um, it will pass, auto pass whatever the revolution is agitating for specifically. So if they're agitating for homesteading, it passes homesteading. If they're agitating for, you know, women in the workplace, it passes women in the workplace. Whatever the revolution's trying to pass, it will force it through. And so if the revolution is just trying to preserve something, it won't force through anything. It just stops you from passing the law. And it will also enforce whatever the governing principle of the interest group is uh, in particular.
particular trying to, of the highest clout in the revolution. So if there's a theocracy boy, um, you know, if there's a devout and then there is a, a landowner, if the devout's stronger, it passes theocracy. If the landowner's stronger, it's going to pass monarchy, uh, unless you have elitism already, but something like this. Um, and so it will do that. Uh, and then it will also give you a whole ton of reduction of radicals and increase in loyalists, which is going to be very good for getting approval uh, bonuses. And so this will help you to like keep everything together, uh, pass laws more explosively. You do this more often with the laws that are harder to pass, like Council Republic. Um, and so this is going to be a very powerful tool, especially in 1.7, uh, where radicalism is going to be way more of a problem. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, uh, do the YouTube algorithm thing. And other than that, uh, have a good one, comrade.